Hi, welcome to the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about data types. Okay, so before I'm going to talk about the data types that are available in the VHDL, I want to talk about uh, what we actually are going to do. Okay, so before you will uh, go, uh, we will go through uh, the data types. I want you to uh, to remind you, okay, that we're actually writing in hardware. Okay, this is not software. Okay, so we are actually writing an uh, electronic. Uh, we're writing the wires. Okay, we are writing, uh, uh, you know, the connection between transistors. Okay, so first you need to remember that, uh, as I talked with you uh, on the previous lecture, that uh, we have this uh, CLB. Okay, uh, which is the uh, FPGA uh, logic block. Okay, so it actually uh, uh, consists of uh, transistors. And I will go through with you uh, uh, now on the data types and just remember that we are writing okay to transistors and we are writing uh, the electronic okay okay so the most uh, let's say the most standard types okay the VHDL types are going to be uh, uh, these ones and I will go briefly with you okay and I will explain you what you should and why what you uh, shouldn't do okay. So everything that I'm going to explain you right now is regarding to the data type sizes, okay? I'm just uh, thinking about uh, you, okay, uh, actually uh, writing a code, okay, to a large FPGA and you have a really large design and uh, you need to uh, take care uh, how much uh, 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 space you are going to uh, you know, uh, uh, you need to fit your code, okay, to the uh, FPGA that you have chosen, okay. So you have uh, large FPGAs, uh, small FPGAs, and you have uh, large designs, and you have a small designs, okay. You can do just a design that, uh, you know, uh, make an end between two signals, okay. For example, this is a very, very small, uh, this is a very, very small design. So none of the things regarding to the data type size has anything to do with small designs. So when I'm talking with you right now and I'm going to explain you, think about that you need uh, to all the time take care how much space you got left. So every time you're going to uh, design your FPGA, you will want to make it uh, as compact as possible. Okay. And this is because uh, uh, three uh, things. Okay. So uh, first of all, you have limited space okay in every FPGA so uh, you don't want to uh, okay uh, catch all the space and uh, the two uh, uh, second uh, reasons actually uh, coming from the first one uh, so uh, the second one is actually because when you're making a, a, a really uh, large design okay um, that will let's say uh, take 90% of your FPGA, you will actually make it, uh, you will make uh, the compiler uh, hard to implement your design into the uh, FPGA, which means that uh, if you really uh, take a look on your FPGA in, you know, on the real uh, electronic component, um, it's actually large and you have a delay between uh, the left side to the right side of the FPGA. So, for example, if you will have a really, really fast clock, okay, coming into your FPGA and you will make a really, really large design, okay, and you will get all the space, um, the compiler will have a hard time, okay, to, uh, um, to fit the timing, okay, and we will touch it uh, later on. It's really hard to think uh, thing to uh, you know to imagine right now but you need to understand that when you're making a really large design uh, the timing you will have timing issues and the third thing is uh, warming okay so your your chip okay your FPGA will get uh, warmer okay uh, it will get hot uh, uh, much more and actually uh, make it uh, you know, hotter will make the FPGA, uh, you know, live uh, le less less time, and of course, it will make uh, timing issues. 
okay and uh, this is the uh, treating that I wanted to tell you okay so first of all we have the uh, uh, VHDL uh, data types okay and these types I never actually uh, I'm not okay using all of them so you have the bit values okay uh, this is uh, uh, this is actually uh, and actually all, all of these are going to be uh, a signals okay or uh, input and output from and to the FPGA so signals are going to be uh, wires inside the FPGA and the input and outputs we talked about this on the previous lecture okay and the bit value actually is going to uh, it's all only holding uh, 0 and 1 a okay? boolean uh, it's like on uh, c or c++ c sharp and java okay it's true and false integer going to be values uh, between minus and plus to 231 and uh, you can see all the rest here okay uh, you have characters and you have uh, time okay now one thing I want to tell you, you remember I told you we are making electronics, okay? So what does it mean when you are choosing an integer type for a signal? Signal is a wire. You are going to call it integer and you are going to say, hey, I want to uh, add to this integer some value. Okay, why I don't like this, all of these types? I don't use them, okay? Only if I'm making a small FPGA and I really need them. I'm using them. Why is that? Is because actually uh, everything is uh, uh, actually uh, like a bit or STD logic. You can imagine wires, and in these wires you have zero and ones. Okay, you have transistors. What does it mean when you are choosing integer? Okay, what does the compiler do? Okay, how long will be your uh, uh, vector? Okay, of bits because there is no. It's not. It's not a, a program in C, okay? You need to understand you're making uh, an electronic uh, design, okay? So when you're choosing integer, for example, and when you're uh, adding values to this integer, after uh, that you're compiling your uh, VHDL code, the compiler will uh, choose uh, how big your vector is going to be, depending on your uh, uh, program, okay? And you can't tell what how 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 long uh, your vector is going to be sometimes it will take the maximum value uh, that integer can have and then you will uh, take a lot of space okay from your fpga we don't want that we want to control everything we do and this is why i like uh, using vectors okay and using std logic okay so the ieee data type standards and this is the package you will have to use. We will talk about this later on. What is the package and how do we write in it when and where? Okay. And right here you have two types: the STDU logic and the STD logic. Okay. First of all, before I'm going to talk with you about them, I'm going to tell you a little secret. STD logic is uh, the most uh, common used one. I'm actually making a really uh, a large designs in. Uh, many companies that I uh, work uh, worked and working for, okay, uh, such as designs for uh, satellites and and uh, you know more uh, cool stuff. And I never use the STDU logic, and you will uh, understand it in a second. Okay. Now the values that STDU logic and STD logic can hold. Okay, as we said right here, the bit can hold zero and one, boolean can true and false, and and so on. Okay, so the STDU logic and STD logic can hold uh, these values, uh, these uh, nine values. Okay, so first is U, means uninitialized, uh, means that um, we didn't initialize any value, which can be zero or one. Okay, so. I want you to understand something here. Everything here can be zero or one, okay? Or a uh, week zero and week one. Now, why am I saying that? Because actually, this is what we're doing. We're doing electronics, and when you're uh, doing, for example, PCB or uh, you know, uh, uh, hardware design, you can have only zero and one, okay? Uh, there is no such thing. Uh, you know, uh, something that uh, floating between them, and 
uh, if you're doing this inside an FPGA, uh, you're in a, a real uh, problem. Okay, so an FPGA, the inner uh, values can be uh, zero or one. Okay, so if you will, for example, set to a wire something that is, uh, you know, weak uh, one or something floating, you don't know what you're going to get. Okay, so uninitialized it means that uh, it doesn't have a value yet. Okay. It can be zero or one, you don't know. X is unknown or a multiple driver, more like multiple driver. Now, multiple driver is our uh, uh, biggest enemy, okay? Multiple drivers means that we're pushing to the same signal, uh, zero and one in the same time, okay? And, and this is where uh, the difference comes between the two of them, and I will explain this in a second. And it, of course, can be zero, can have one, it can have a weak uh, X, and you can tell if it's zero or one, okay? This is a, a W, a Z uh, is a floating or high impedance, and a, a, a I is weak one, pull up, low is weak zero, pull down. When do we use these guys? Um, mostly in I square C communication. So, for example, if you're going to write uh, I square C communication, uh, you will see that every time that you're, uh, uh, if you want to, you know, design something uh, in I square C, you will have uh, pull ups. Okay. And um, imagine that you have your an I square C sum component, and right here you will have your uh, FPJ, okay, like in master and slave. Okay. So, this is, for example, your FPJ. And the PCB designer forgot to pull this, to put uh, pull-ups, okay? Or even if you want to um, just simulate it, you can use uh, this too, okay? Um, this one is uh, don't care, okay? And these types mostly not used so much. I never use this once. You just need to know that they are, exist, okay? If you will ever see them in a code, okay? Now, okay, the difference between STDU logic and STDU logic, okay, is that uh, STDU logic is unresolved, okay, um, which means that if we set a signal with one and zero for example, okay, so you have here an example that you have sig one and you set zero and after 20 nanoseconds you set it uh, to one, you will have error when compiling the project, okay. Only if the SIG is STDU logic, you will have an error while compiling the project, okay? Uh, in the other end, for STDU logic, you will uh, be able to compile, okay? But you will see it in the simulation uh, um, like this, okay? So if you choose to use uh, STD logic, okay, you will see uh, the signal in the simulation like this, okay? As I told you before, this is an unknown a state or multiple drivers, okay, when we set zero and one to the same signal. So it doesn't know if it's zero or one, so it's writing X. Okay, after uh, 20 seconds, it's writing X. And uh, as much as you can see before that it was a zero, okay, like here. So it was this zero and after 20 seconds, in the, a nanosecond, it, it didn't know uh, what to set to the signal. And uh, this is, of course, by this table. So if you set a zero and one, you will get to X, okay? And uh, we will want to use actually STD logic, okay? You can also use, of course, the STDU logic if you want to uh, find the error in the uh, compilation. And uh, uh, one more thing, if you want to use all of the nine, okay? If you want to use all of them, yeah, use STDU logic, okay? but uh, we actually never use all of them. Most of the time, 99% of the time, you will use only logic zero, logic one, and uh, high Z, okay? And uh, this is why you should use STD logic. Um, okay, and as I, I wrote you here, uh, you must remember that we are electronic engineers and we want to see uh, the real behavior of the system and STD uh, logic gives us uh, the real picture of the uh, digital uh, signal behavior. Okay, so if you will use STD logic, it will just say, hey, you have a, a problem over there and you will, uh, it will make you hard to know when did it occur. 
Okay. Um, so I recommend you using the STD logic like uh, the rest, most of the world. Okay. And okay, the next ones uh, will be a, a bit vector. It's same like bit. Okay. It's a predefined VHDL. Uh, you don't need any package for them. Uh, same as the uh, first ones. Okay. The bit and the others. Uh, uh, you have a string. It's array of chars and text uh, file. Uh, file of strings and you have uh, the next ones that uh, again I, I love to use them so as stdu logic you have stdu logic vector which is an array of stdu logic okay and you have std logic vector which is an array of std logic uh, again this is the most common uh, used one between the two okay <clears throat> the more common used one and uh, for using uh, both of them, you will have to use uh, this uh, package, okay? And for using the next uh, uh, things, okay? You will have to use uh, uh, this package or this package. Now, uh, why did I make this one on a uh, bold? Because uh, this one is not supported anymore, okay? So when you want to use arithmetic, or uh, something that you need arithmetic, just use the uh, numeric. Okay, sometimes you will have to compile uh, compiling issues with the arithmetic. Okay, so you have uh, more two uh, types, which is unsigned and signed. And if you're an electronic engineer, you must be familiar with uh, this. Okay, so unsigned uh, represent unsigned uh, numerical values, uh, which can be uh, positive or zero only. Okay and uh, signed can be positive zero and uh, or negative okay so actually uh, the big difference between uh, the std uh, uh, logic vectors and the unsigned and signed okay the big difference is that uh, the compiler um, and actually on when you're writing your code okay you will just uh, uh, use the signed it will just recognize it as a number, okay? So you will be able to set it as a, a, a number and not uh, with uh, bits and and like this, okay? So, and one more thing you will have to be familiar with, okay? So you have, uh, you have the bit uh, uh, vectors and the numbers, okay? And you have uh, a way to convert them, okay? So we will go about this on uh, next lectures, okay? But you need to know uh, that you can convert from, uh, for example, a the logic vector uh, to a signed just by uh, writing a uh, signed, okay? And uh, just write uh, this V, uh, which is the uh, STD logic vector, and then you get this signed right here, okay? Uh, I will show you this on the next lecture. You just need to know that this exists. I really love to use, uh, Okay, this uh, photo, okay, it's uh, making uh, life easier sometimes. And uh, actually, uh, this is it for uh, this lecture, okay, and I will see you on the next lecture, and thank you.